Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 95 of the In From Japan podcast, the podcast where we talk about the latest news on Japan-developed games and other things in relation to them. Available on YouTube and in most places podcasts can be found. As always, I'm your host, Errol Moss, with my co-host, the Phenomenon from Suriname, Jason Corner. Hey, hey. And, uh, no, again, no real housekeeping this week. We just haven't been doing m- much extra stuff. But maybe in the future. I mean, we've just been busy doing other everyone's stuff. Everyone's pretty it busy, happens. especially now entering the, the the latter part of the year. Yeah, fall gaming season is upon us. Um, so we're actually going to get right into the Japanese games we've been playing. So <laughs> I've only been playing one game for the past week, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's Code Vein. Again, I fu- I went back to it. Hmm. Well, I've been playing it because I wanted to get, finally get past that cathedral level. So what happens is you there's a boss like in the middle of the cathedral, and, and then you then you go into like your your character's memories, and then you, you have like an area in there, and you fight that boss, and then you go back to the cathedral to finish it, and then you finally move on to an ice area that is much cooler. Oh um, yeah. I think I've seen but that in I'm, the trailer. I, it has a, it has a bigger play. Like a, it still has a pretty. I don't know of a big player base, but it still has a player base. Because when I like send my signal out for co-op stuff, it, um, I usually get someone in a couple minutes. I mean, uh, I think from from what I've seen, is it's a very uh, small but dedicated fan base. Um, yeah. kind of like w- and I'm sure Game Pass helped with that too yeah there's that and it, it's I, I see it more as an extension of the God Eater fan base and that that's pretty strong too so uh, yeah I'm, I'm happy to, to, to hear you've you've had no trouble right. with that but uh, I, a, a question uh, are you playing it to finish it or are you like you want to get it over with or is it something you actually no no to finish it because i I was so it was it was one of those things where it's like all this Elden ring hype got me like oh man i want to play like a souls like or a souls game but i didn't want to start demon souls yet because i didn't want to start another new game Mm -hmm. and i was like well i'm already in the middle of code vein so i'll just look up what i need to do the most annoying thing is the reason I was stuck in the cathedral. I was stuck in the cathedral for so long because there's this specific key you have to get to get to the next part, and it's so you see it at the save point. It's abo- in like a, the second floor above you, but you have to loop around this weird way to get to it, and it took me like several tries and several different part- co-op partners to get to. <laughs> finally get to it and i was like yay finally is there no voice chat to help you coordinate through the mazes or dungeons no i mean i i was messaging people oh, okay it's it's just more like it's just a very confusing mm-hmm. like even the guy was like oh sorry i've been taking you in circles this is a confusing map and i'm like oh no i get it this <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, on the Japanese side of things, that's really all I've been playing. I haven't played much Super Robot Wars or Final Fantasy XIV for a little while. Is, is there a reason for that? But I'll get that? back into them shortly. Well, we'll talk about the Final Fantasy XIV reason in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, the Super Robot Wars, is just kinda, I just kind of put it down for a little while. That's about it. All right. I'm, I plan on going back. I fully plan on going back to it. It's just... Code Vein got a lot of my attention because of, like I said, the Elden Ring hype, mm-hmm. and like I actually made progress. Yeah, <laughs> got to the next couple of areas. Yeah, I I finished the ice area, and now I I'm I'm not sure what the next area is, but um, my problem right now is I feel like my weapons don't do that much damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they do fi- dam- damage to enemies. They do okay. Damage to bosses. They, it seems like they do such a minimal amount. So I've been using more magic. Magic seems pretty OP in that game. Are you up- <laughs> not gonna lie. upgrading your gear then? Or st- yeah, I'm upgrading the gear too, and it still feels like it's it's like not doing enough damage on bosses. Maybe it's just the bosses mm-hmm. or themselves or something. Um, um, do- but whenever I have a co-op partner, they do better. But I don't know like 
what level they are compared to me. Do, so. do the bosses maybe have elemental weaknesses or, or? Yeah, they do. Well, some of them do. Like the last boss I faced, mm -hmm. he had a fire weakness, so I was using a lot of fire magic. Mm -hmm. I probably should have also used the fire weapon skill. Probably, maybe that. I need to. I need to start using my skills a bit more mm -hmm. because once you, because they're they're locked behind like certain um, blood codes. Mm -hmm. But once you have a mastery of them, you can just use them for any blood code. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So I just need to go and, like, practice those for a while mm. so I can have, like, a, a cool mix of stuff. Or just have, like, more options. Okay. But, uh, otherwise, uh, it's fine. I'm still a little annoyed with the whole there's no actual facial hair option. <laughs> except for a Santa beard. I mean... And you can turn the Santa beard different colors, but it clips through your mask. I don't think Japan <laughs> is the, the country known People for... in Japan, ha they have facial I, I hair. Know, Anime characters have facial I know, hair. I know they have facial hair, but... I'm, I'm guessing they, they've modeled their characters on, like, what? 18-year-olds or, like, like early to mid-teens? And probably that's why they don't have facial hair. Some of the older characters even don't, though. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, you know. I don't know. Maybe for Code Vein too. You know, they're vampires. Vampires don't have. But like, it, it's funny because I because like stuff clips. Mm -hmm. the hair hair will clip through hats if you have long hair. Mm -hmm. Um, so I I did the I I gave myself a haircut, but <laughs> but um, I put on a Santa hat. And like a big Santa hat, and then they have these two smaller Santa hats, one for the left and one for the right. Mm -hmm. So I, I put the two small Santa hats on top of the big one, so I just have weird-looking bulby antennas coming out of the hat. That, that's, a, that's a choice. <laughs> it doesn't even show the, the entire small hat, depending on the angle. Mm -hmm, okay. But I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> Why not? Um... But yeah, I'm still enjoying it. I'm just trying to figure out... What to do uh, next. Yeah, what to do next, mostly. And then hopefully I'll get that done, and then I'll... I'll probably be moving on to Shin Megami Tensei Five mm -hmm. once that comes out. Now, I, um, I don't have Shin Megami Tensei V. Um, you know, Atlas, if if you hear this, hook your boys up. Just, just a little. Just a little. <laughs> but... Uh, um, I might also be getting that, um, but I don't know if I, if, if I'll stick stick with it long enough because I, I'm I'm hearing about how difficult it can be, and uh, I I don't know if I'm if I'm all up for it. You can always do the easiest difficulty. There's no shame. No, in there, it. that's Especially true. If it's your first that's one. true. But it it might be that mechanically, uh, it, it it might frustrate me too much. But we'll see. Mm. Speaking of Atlas, I also got the uh, that bitmap books um, guide to JRPGs. Mm -hmm. Really good. The book is huge. Is, is it like every RPG ever, or every RPG up no. to the point? It's like it's like key ones. It's key RPGs. So like, there's like a a chapter about like the term JRPG mm. and when it, that started and then the history of JRPGs then localization uh. and it gets into like the games themselves by like by genre and series uh, okay. so there's like um, like Final Fantasy Dragon you know, Quest like, it'll be like Dungeon Crawlers and Final Fantasy has a section and and, and Dragon Quest has a section and Monster Collecting has a section mm -hmm. um I'm very, I'm pretty satisfied. I I previewed the because they give you a PDF of the book when you order the book, but uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the monster collecting um subsection s section because uh mm -hmm. because it has you know it has Pokemon but it also has Digimon Story, Dragon Quest Monsters, Yokai Watch, uh, Demi Kids, and uh. Did I say Monster Hunter Stories already? I think so. Uh, um, hmm. uh, Actually, I've been meaning to ask you. I, I, I read uh, Gita Jackson's uh, article on Shin Megami Tensei, and she argued that the Shin Megami franchise can actually be viewed as the progenitor of the monster hunting slash collecting genre. Do, do you think that's... Uh, 
that's close to what you've uh, researched up till now? Sorry, can you can you run that by me again? Yeah, so Gita Jackson of, of Vice uh, um, wrote something about Shin Megami Tensei V about uh, I, I think it was is it like how it's being re received these days or how, how difficult it can be and how unforgiving it can be? And one thing uh, jumped out at me uh, being that um, she mentioned how the Shin Megami Tensei franchise or Megami, Megami Tensei franchise c can be viewed as the progenitor of the Monster Hunter collecting, yes. taming. Oh, Monster Hunter. No, not Monster no, Hunter. I, Monster collecting. Well, all those things <laughs> in, in one. Uh, do do do, do yeah. you think that's uh, something you you've come across in your research up till now? Yeah, I wrote you edited the article that I did about Mon Games that mentions that. No, sure, I I I I have <laughs> done the edits, but it, it's more of what what is definitively the the origin of a thing versus yeah people usually point people like the the jrpg book points that back to that mm. uh as well um usually that's people point back to shin megami tensei or um or dragon quest 5 okay and then there are some other games even before that that less people know about that that some like the mo more dedicate like even more dedicated fans will point back mm. to but but even there, like but like nobody really knows about that game, so it's kind of moot point. So it's it's <laughs> kind of like how you mentioned how Telefang uh, can be seen as influential to the genre, but no one really knows about it anymore. Something like that. I don't know if Telefang was influential to the genre. <laughs> okay, I'm being too generous then. Um, yeah, <laughs> Telefang is just like a, a very interesting and unique type of thing yeah. um but yeah so it seems like you've been playing a handful of different things um well that that's being generous um i'll start with the 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 games i've played the least uh among the crop of the things i've mentioned here animal crossing new horizon uh i purchased dlc and I have yet to touch any of the DLC elements. And I don't know why I'm like this. Um, well, you know, mostly busy with work and personal life. So I, I can't really dedicate much time to uh, Animal Crossing. Also because I'm busy with other things. Um, other games, I, I should say. Um, Western games, more like. Um, but I'm, I'm really eager to try and... The game still is so charming and so delightful, and it just feels like such a such a nice getaway from everything. It's it's the thing that drew us all to this game last year, but coming back after such an extended uh, hiatus, not not even hiatus, but I think I don't think any of us have have been actively playing it over the last few months, but coming back to it, it it just felt so comforting and so rewarding um and you know it, it's 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 better experience at your own pace don't don't try to grind out uh your cookbook or your recipe book for um furniture or um treasures or whatnot just just go at it at your own pace and uh, try to discover the things you want to discover and don't feel beholden to any set path, and uh, yeah, yeah, that 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 might just uh, benefit the longevity of the game um, for most of us. Uh, besides that, I I too have succumbed to the uh, Elden Ring hype, and I started playing Demon Souls Remake again. Uh, nothing really to report. I just uh, tried out. Uh, if uh, if if uh, don't don't I don't know if anybody in the audience or you can hear that, but there are fireworks going on. I guess because it's, I think because it's Veterans Day. No, I I, ha I hear nothing. So okay, they 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 don't usually do them this early, like ever. So it's really weird. <laughs> they might be feeling extra patriotic this year. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, but uh, back to the Demon Souls remake. It's uh, I, was it Upper Latar- Latria, Boletaria? No, I, I don't really remember where I'm at. It's it's the part where the sto- where the stone gargoyles are harassing you. Oh, I've seen those before. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's where I'm at. Um, and I'm just making my way through it, and it's it's challenging, but also not super challenging if you know what you're doing. Um, and an interesting thing I, I want wanted to bring up is people have mentioned um, how the graphics of Elden Ring look compared to Demon Souls, and it's how do I explain this? It's it's two different teams expressing mm, their own take on a certain subject, like. Uh, I think the way Bluepoint handled the the visual aspect of Demon Souls remake was to polish it so so vastly to a point that you you will look at it as a visual uh, marvel that would be befitting of a PS5 title, whereas Elden Ring is a cross gen title and there's mm-hmm. that distinctive griminess that from softer games have like the limbs are elongated a little bit and the textures are are rough around the edges and they're they're less concerned with the upper echelons of visual fidelity and more concerned with conveying a mood and a and uh an atmosphere with their visual uh visual works so I, I don't think it's fair to say that Elden Ring looks quote unquote ugly compared to Demon's Souls remake, but it's it's more of how art direction can speak differently uh, across titles and across people. Uh, but yeah, that's that's just my little uh, tangent uh, regarding Demon Souls. Uh, but what I've put the most time into these t- these past few days is Tales of Luminaria. It's a new Tales of game for mobile devices, iOS and Android. And we've mentioned it before. It's a full uh, original title, not a crossover like Crestoria uh, or the Tales of the Rays or or whatever came before. It's it's very unique. That's what I'll say. Um, The presentation is, is decent enough. But it's it's uh, the perspective is is portrayed via the portrait mode, and that can kind of be a hit or miss because so much of your periphery is cut off, and you can then not really guess or gauge how your enemies are attacking you or how you should be reacting to the enemies or dodging or or you know. Um, um, parrying their moves and that that becomes a bit tricky um, and I, I don't think it's all that um, balanced uh, when it comes to certain weapon archetypes like ranged damage dealers have a bit of a rough go at things especially in the secret missions where it's very unbalanced and very difficult like you're, hmm. you're barely given a chance to, to react in time or you barely do enough damage to to progress significantly, so that's very frustrating. Um, the UI for the for the mobile app is very clean, I think, and very uncluttered, and I think that's amazing, and something the game doesn't get enough credit for. And there's there's also just one or two uh, currency forms. Which is a breath of fresh air. I I don't know if you've played any of the, well you you have but maybe the audience hasn't but usually in gacha titles um, specifically gacha titles uh, surrounding anime properties or whatnot they have like a bajillion different currencies trying to obfuscate what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to get it so you just end up paying real world money to get the thing you want. Um, which is probably how it's designed that way. But 
in Luminaria, it's very different. You just earn uh, currency for summons and currency for uh, buying like food items, and that's it. That's all it is. There's 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 no gotcha elements for uh, rolling characters or uh, what have you. It's just gotcha for weapons and and armor and that's it's, it's not even that important to the grand scheme of things it's just there if you want it and that's so refreshing and i don't know how they're getting away with this but okay i'm i'm impressed um the thing that also sets this this game apart is that it's broken down in different chapters um, I think there should be eight chapters across 21 characters, if I'm not mistaken. And then a crossover chapter between uh, significant story points. So it, it's it's mm. it's going to be a very lengthy game all in all. Um, yeah. I think I'm like halfway through it now um, with the available episodes. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. There's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, friend of the show, uh, Lucas, uh, from uh, Silicon Era. Oh, no, Prima Games, sorry. No, nope. Prima Games. Prima yeah, Games. He was formerly, for, formerly Silicon, Silicon, Era. Silicon Era. That was a while yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he wasn't as enthused by it. And if, if you see the chatter online, you can see why not. It's the camera. It's the, the, hmm. the, 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 the slight... Uh, unbalanced nature of the game it shows promise but yeah i, I hope uh Bandai namco sticks with it um i think we're promised at least a year of content and there will also be an anime based on the on the game so you know there's a lot to look forward to with, with regards to this title uh yeah that's uh that's all i've been playing this this last few days or these last few days. Hmm. Um, all right. So we're going to move on to the end from Japan J list, recent video game related entertainment news. First, we have Netflix's live action one piece series reveals cast members. What? Oh, uh, this is by Rafael Antonio Pineda mm -hmm. for uh, anime news network. The official Twitter account for the Hollywood live action series of Eichiro Oda's one piece manga posted a video with the cast members of the series introducing themselves and their roles on Tuesday. Um, the cast members include Inaki Godoy as Monkey D. Luffy, Makenyu as Roronoa Ro Zoro. I always, I, I usually just say Zoro because I, you, it's so hard you have for me the to four say the first. Dub in, your, in your head. Um, no, it would be Zolo in that case. Oh, no. Please don't. And it's still the it's still Zolo in the manga, I think in in the manga and subtitles, I in think. Certain translations, yes. Yeah. Emily Rudd as Nami. Jacob Romero Gibson as Usopp. And Taz Skyler as Sanji. Um, what did you think? Netflix will exclusively So what I do like about mm -hmm. this is one, it's not white you know, it could have been uh it's not as bad as the casting for Dragon Ball Evolution or, um, um, oh no, well, Dragon Ball Evolution's casting actually wasn't that bad. It was just a bad movie. Uh, but it's not. Well, well. I mean, it was, it could have been a worse casting. At least it wasn't like Last Airbender casting. Uh, Ugh. uh, oh, well, but, but like, what I, but it seems like they were trying to go based off of something Oda said in an old interview where he's where he said oh he thought like the straw hats might be you know these specific nationalities and, you know it doesn't match up it doesn't match match up completely but like it's close it enough. seems like they they there was some kind of effort there yeah you know it's not like they have i don't that could be you know at least i don't have i don't know freaking chris pratt as luffy and scarlett johansson as nami or something <laughs> Let's let the Chris Pat Pratt slander rest for a bit. I mean, the ma the man has. I just was I, look. I was just looking for an example. Uh, I was, uh, <laughs> okay, the Scarlett Johansson one is relevant though. 
Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I was just looking for an example. Yeah, um, I, I like it. I like the cast. Um, in, I've never seen any of these people in anything. Um, I have that seen I know of. Emily Rudd um, in the Fear Street trilogy. It's the horror trilogy, on, right? On Netflix, uh, Inyaki Godoy. I do not know, but he does exude Luffy's Luffy energy, Luffy's childlike <laughs> enthusiasm. And I really appreciate yeah. that. Maken Yu was in the last Roroni Kenshin movie, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I see. Samurai X for the Western fans. He was also in Pacific Rim Uprising, if I'm not mistaken. He was? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Let's see. Um, Jacob Romero Gibson, I do not know. But he, 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 he exudes Usopp energy just... He, oh. he just has the the right look for Usopp. Actually, he was yeah Pacific Rim Uprising, but he was also in a uh, Common Rider Drive movie, uh, the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond is Unbreakable movie. Yeah. Um, he was Haru in the Nino Kuni movie. Well, there you go. Um, Ra- Rorani Kenton the final. And he's going to also going to be in the night, the live action Knights of the Zodiac yeah. movie. I forgot that was a thing. And Task Skyler, um, he certainly. Oh, and Tokyo Ghoul. He has a charm of him about him, yes. uh, but I don't know if it's Sanji charm just yet. But right, a lot of people were saying because of his haircut, he should be. Uh, he should be Inaru Zoro or Enel. No, Inaru or Enel. Because uh, the blonde, blonde short hair. <laughs> I mean, and he looks really similar to him. It's like you have him right there. I mean, we'll we'll see how how it actually develops because we don't know how they look in costumes. We don't know how they're supposed to act. What the direction will be. There are so many variations in 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 what way they can go with this. Um, mm. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty pretty impressed so far. Um, yeah. We know it had been like there was stuff of it filming, or I thought there was there were rumbles of that it was like filming in South A- South Africa, and they had a there was like a Going Mary replica. Mm-hmm. But if they hadn't even announced the cast yet, that doesn't I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that makes sense. Production usually progresses a lot further, and um, and then they announce casting and. And uh, and uh, production info. It's 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 not. Mm. Yeah, I I don't know if that stuff was was like a real thing. That was just something I remember seeing a couple yeah I, I, a while I, I, ago. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Yeah, um, but you know that's not going to be for quite some time. We still got to see how this Cowboy Bebop uh, series turns out. Yeah, I mean, um, after the, the initial, or not the initial, like, the last period... The teaser trailer? Oh, and the, the, the full trailer, like, people were mm-hmm. pretty um, jazzed about it, but... No pun intended? <laughs> no, definitely not intended. And recently, <laughs> uh, Netflix has been dropping, like, comparison shots between the anime and the live-action show, and they're, like, so dedicated to showing that they're recreating the anime frame by frame and some people are kind of worried because that cannot like you don't want to do yeah you don't want to do that you don't have to do you don't want to do yeah. that because animation can get away with so much and live action cannot can you imagine if speed racer was frame by frame uh, <laughs> well some would argue that it is but you know well, no, but I mean, like, more literally. No, no, no. That would be a disaster, I think. Uh, but, yeah, like, I, I just wish they do something more original versus trying to copy what's already there. Because why do that when the original show is still there? But they have mentioned that they do want to take the, 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 the groundwork that the anime um, laid laid down and kind of progress further with it like expand it a bit yeah it's probably because you know netflix sees potential of multiple seasons so uh right yeah. and cowboy bebop is kind of a good one to do it with because 
Like, there's an underlying story, but there's also, like... It's... I don't want to say... It, not standalone episodes, but it has this... Qual- like, yeah, that's a th- standalone quality. A bit of an episodic lean to it, yeah. yeah. And that's why there was... A, there was also that, um... They could also get, um... Use, uh... The manga store... Because there was, like, a spin-off manga that was set in between certain episodes. Mm. So they could use that for additional stuff if they felt like it. Yeah. I mean, sky's the limit so far. Yeah. Um... Uh, next up, Fullmetal Alchemist Hiromu Arakawa launches Yomi no Sugai manga on December 10th. This is by Rafael Antonio Pineda, once again, for Anime News Network. The December issue of Square Enix's monthly Shonen Gangan magazine revealed on Friday that Hiromu, Hiromu Arakawa's new manga is titled Yomi no Sugai, The Hinge of the Underworld, and it will launch in the magazine's next issue on December 10th. The magazine had teased in July that Arakawa was launching a new manga soon. The manga centers on Yuru, a boy who lives in a remote mountain village, spending his time hunting hunting birds and being one with nature. But one day, Yur- Yuru's younger twin sister, Asa, is called to serve in the jail at the heart of the village, her duty also confining her there. Yuru slowly unravels the unnatural mystery hidden beneath his quiet village. Best known, Arakawa is best known for Full Metal Alchemist and Silver Spoon, and you know that whole. Hmm. You know the rest. Yeah. So, yeah, a new Arakawa manga, huh? Yeah, I mean, she's a sure bet. Um, she has a very pleasant style and can do action right. very well. And uh, based off of what she managed to do with Full Metal Alchemist, I'm pretty sure she can also inject a lot of. Um, historical allusions and, and uh, philosophical ideas into right. the text. So I'm um, yeah I'm interested. I never uh, never really never saw any Silver Spoon. Huh. I tried Heroic Legend of Arslan Arslan um, mm-hmm. years ago, but I wasn't into it. Um, there was what was the other one she did? It was like Legend. Uh, uh, it was like a martial arts one. It was called like Legendary. No, not Legendary Heroes. I'm, I'm or, looking it uh, up. What was it? You know what I'm talking about? I'm looking it up. Okay, what has she done? Stray Dog, Shanghai, Yomikikai. Hero Tales. I think that's what it was. Yeah, it was Hero Tales. Yeah, I, could. I haven't tried that either. Okay. But. That was the one I was most interested in because it was also, you know, action oriented. Well, not that Arslan Sankey isn't, but well, Arslan. I just wasn't into Arslan. Arslan is also like an adaptation, so she didn't have right. as much leeway with her original works. Um, and then last on the J list, we have Common Rider franchise gets Ohiru no Shakersan manga and anime. This is once again by Rafael Antonio Pineda. He does a lot of work for Anime News Network. <laughs> the official website for the Common Rider franchise revealed on Thursday that the franchise is a new manga by Study Yusaku uh, titled Ohi- Ohiru no Shakersan, Shocker During the Day, that launched on the same day on the Line Manga platform. I did not know that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> With an anime also planned for the manga in 2022. Both the manga and anime celebrate the franchise's 50th anniversary. The manga centers on the everyday struggles of the lackeys of Shocker, the villain organization in the original Kamen Rider series. The announcement calls November 11th or 11-11 E-Day. That's just a bunch of eyes. Uh. As a wordplay on the Shocker's characteristic cry. The anime project is accepting auditions for singers for the anime's theme song through the Line Live live streaming app, as well as voice acting auditions for a Shocker Lackey through the voice acting live streaming app Voice Connect. And there's the upcoming Common Rider anime that's going to launch in uh, summer 2022, the Common Rider Double One, and then the Shin Common Rider live action film that's coming up. That's by Hideaki uh, Hideaki Ano. Oh, mm. speaking of which, the uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion Blu-ray is up for pre-order. Mm. Unfortunately, so you know how there are two dubs, right? Two English dubs, the Netflix dub and then the original one? Yeah. 
So the the regular Blu-ray set, I I think it comes with Japanese audio as well, but it just comes with the uh, Netflix English dub. The collector's edition, which is now sold out, Mm -hmm. comes with both dubs. Mm. So that's kind of not great. Um, I wouldn't say not great. I, I mean, I, we're lucky we're getting a re-release at all, but still, like, hmm, I, it's not. It's not. I don't like locking it, locking a dub behind a more expensive collector's edition. Yeah, I don't think that's that. That is kind of gross. Like, it's why would why would you do that? Why, why, why are you holding like, them hostage? I still need to watch Neon Genesis Evangelion because you know that's um giant robots fighting monsters and stuff. That's up my alley. Uh, but hmm. I know there's other stuff to it too. Hmm. But I'm still interested in it, and Hideaki, Hideaki Anno, you know. Well, there are giant monsters, and there are giant robots, but, you know. But the lion is thinner than you think. No, it's it's it's, uh, it's more like <laughs> Neo Genesis is pretty much depression, the anime. So. I know, uh, but people say, like, oh, you're going to watch the series before you watch the movies because the movies are so different from the series and this and that. And The, uh, the movies are... Well, let me put it like this. The, the series is the original Final Fantasy VII. The movies are the Final Fantasy VII remake for PS5. So the movies are worse? No. But everybody thinks they're better? No, in terms of storytelling, <laughs> it's... it's <laughs> it's an adaptation of the original story, but with original elements, and at a certain point they diverge. Right. Yeah. So, and it's it's all part of the same um, canon, so it f- kind of folds in on each other. So, which doesn't make any sense, but okay, it makes sense. But you you have to get through it all to to know what what right. kind of sense it. Maybe makes. some someday when I can access. The original dub or i'll just watch it in japanese but people say the netflix subtitles aren't great because it's based off of the new english script so it's like just yeah, just, yeah, just watch the netflix one you'll be fine uh, i don't know you will be fine um i've been watching what was i i was watching some anime recently but i how did i forget what it was <laughs> um No, I planned on watching a bunch of giant robot animes because of Super Robot Wars. Mm. <laughs> and I was trying to find all of them. Mm. I was like, okay, this one's on this service, this one's on this service, that one's on nothing, I don't know where to find that. <laughs> but do you even have enough time to watch a full series now? Well, I w- I'm seeing which ones are the short ones. Mm. <laughs> um, Alright, so moving on to recommended content... We have Playing Strange Journey Redux as a Persona fan is so weird yet so familiar by Nadia Oxford for US Gamer. It's an old one, but Nadia retweeted it when all the Shin Megami Tensei Five uh, discourse was happening, mm. so I thought it would be good to highlight. And also because a lot of Shin Megami Tensei fans say Strange Journey is the best one. Hmm. We have Memories of Life working on Final Fantasy IX by Kazuhiko Aoki for PlayStation blog. Did you see this? I saw it. I haven't got a chance to read it just yet. Yeah, it seemed very interesting. There, there was like a tiny line about how he, he hopes that um, getting new fans or having the old fans come together yeah. would lead to more in the future. And people were like, is he teasing? Oh my god, Final Fantasy IX remake. <laughs> it's like, no, he just means like the future celebration of the game. It's just, Stop! Stop! Well, because people have been like speculating a Final Fantasy IX remake. Um, Alex know. Donaldson of RPG while. site and uh, VG Twenty Four Seven has said that, and I, I share that opinion. It's like if Square w- were to invest in a remake of another mainline entry, it would probably be Final Fantasy VIII or ten, maybe. You really think it would be eight y- of all things? Yes, because. Um, they they were grasping for something that wasn't there and thus couldn't fully realize their vision, I think. Right. So mm-hmm. if, if they got the chance to do that again, um, there, there could be potential. And Final Fantasy VIII has a very 
vocal fan base. Like, shout out to my friend Greg who listens to the podcast. Thank you for listening to the podcast. He's a diehard fan for Final Fantasy VIII. And also, um, Natalie Flores, a fan bite. Yes, there's old Natalie Pretty. Flores, a fan bite. So, and there's a couple more that I'm like that uh, that I can't think of right there now. There are but dozens. There, I know of a them. couple more. Dozens. Yeah. Um, Nadia doesn't like Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> I've come to find out. Oh, um, <laughs> I still have. Did you expect that? Like she might? No, I no, no, like, no, oh. no, no, no. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII is very hit or miss among the yeah, fan base because mm-hmm. it's so different so the junction system yeah. and some other and probably other stuff <laughs> i own it I, I still haven't really played it i have it, it through game pad no did they it wasn't game pad it was gonna be it was gonna be it was it taken off recently it's going to be taken off or uh, or has been taken off um because i need to i need to get it because you know, I'm trying to get all the Final Fantasy games. You're not the mainline ones. You're not coll- mainline, mainline. Are you collecting Infinity Zones? Uh, well, you know, I have the. <laughs> if I was collecting Infinity Stones, I would have changed reality already. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll, I'm, I'll check to see if Final Fantasy uh, Eight is still erase on. Erase all the erase all the NFTs. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> wow! Uh, <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> um, then we have uh, Elden Ring's network test offered me something unexpected by Tamor Hussein over at Gamespot. A lot of Elden Ring preview stuff coming out. Gamatsu has a whole list of all the different sites. One, but I wanted to highlight Tamor's because Tamor is like he knows his soul stuff, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. No um, matter how much random people in the YouTube comments think he doesn't. Okay, so I just checked for you and Final Fantasy VIII is still available. Okay. I think I have it downloaded on because you know it's not a big download. Hmm. So I think I have it downloaded. Okay. Um Then we have in Pokemon Arceus and the Jewel of Life, Ash tries to kill God by Eric Switzer for the gamer. As you do. <laughs> I need to rewatch. Okay, so uh, I I was looking through uh, Prime Video, mm-hmm. and so the Rise of Dark Rye not on there right now. Well, it's on there, but it's not. You can rent it, mm. but what's on Prime like available through Prime Video right now? Mm-hmm. Giratina and the Sky Warrior and Arceus and the Jewel of Life. Let me see. I think I only have Diamond and they, <sighs> and then uh. Pokemon the movie three spell of the unknown is has been on there for a while. They just took off Pokemon two thousand. Well, Pokemon two thousand you can still rent, but it was on Prime for a little while. Mm. Okay, so I have Gold and Silver, Diamond and Pearl, X and Y the series, and Detective Pikachu on Prime Video. On Prime Video. Yeah. Um, I think Hulu has Detective Pikachu over here. Yeah. Um. We don't have Hulu. And then the Pokemon movies, yeah, they're all kind of all over the place. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Um, and then we have, last on the recommended content, we have, you can't truly appreciate Pokemon until you've seen the movie. Also, the movies, also by Eric Switzer for The Gamer. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up is the news rundown. And we have several pieces of baddish news this week, so I'll let... Our bearer of bad news of Shinigami taken away. Bantai. Okay. So, <laughs> the first news, and sure to upset Errol, is Square Enix is looking to enter the NFT games market. This is by Andrew Kia for Silicon I mean, Era. It upset me already. I'm not going to get any more upset than I was when I saw that <laughs> mm. earlier this week. Just, I mean, I don't... <laughs> ju- just you wait. Just you wait. After seeing considerable <laughs> considerable success with its previous NFT projects, Square Enix is reportedly planning to expand into the NFT games market. Square Enix wants to focus on decentralized games with token economies, whatever the hell that means. The company believes that these token economies will continue to take hold as more people become interested in decentralized content. Shout out to Daniel Ahmad. Earlier this week... Square Enix made its first foray into the blockchain. This this is like the Matrix, but worse. The company sold a limited number <laughs> of million art <laughs> NFT digital stickers via the Align NFT marketplace. 
According to a recent investor relations presentation, the NFT project was a proof of concept designed to see if Square Enix IPs can sell as NFTs. Mm -hmm. It's like the Matrix, but instead of like, you know, cool slow mo and and the green lines and everything, it's just just get more really ugly looking art. It's just just ugly looking art everywhere, and. Yeah. The environment getting ruined by the environmental art. Well, that's you know, uh, we should get into that into a, in a separate conversation. But uh, okay. No, I know, like the whole not all embassies are made the same way and blah blah blah. But it's still just as a whole, it's just the thing ridiculous. Even the creator, the creator of MS NFTs, mm-hmm. even said something recently about them being a scam. Okay. <laughs> like, the the fundamental nature of nfts um is something to be admired sure but the way it has been implemented and how people have Just abused the the systems surrounding stealing NFTs, art stealing too, art yeah. um trampling all over ip rights uh, right it has made it a mess and now it's just a speculative boom and gaming companies are jumping on it because waiting for the crash they're, they're just jumping on it because it's the hot new thing um although i did see i did see somebody say like um like what was it ea the ea ceo or something Andrew Wilson. was like said like yeah so nfts are like the future of the game industry is like well you remember what they said about single player games so it's probably gonna crash <laughs> well also i i think jason schreier pointed it out um, even though they are saying oh it's the future of games as we know it none of the ceos and business people can explain what nfts are and how they should be implemented they don't know it's just it this is really simply bandwagoning to the to the max that's it uh i mean could it be cool to have like a, a very rare um trading card of a thing that just you have and it has value sure but they already exist it's uh, oh, mm. uh. people people just really were people were just getting on just really late to the pokemon card thing huh yep, <laughs> yep. They're, they're like oh we can't get po- pokemon card fine we'll build our own cards with blockchain like uh, I don't think that's how it works, but okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> next, next up, we have Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker expansion delayed to sep- no, not September, December seventh. Oh my God! Could you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> September twenty twenty. Like, oh no. Twenty twenty two. No, twenty twenty two. Yeah. Sorry. This is by Sal Romano from Gamatsu. Square Enix has delayed massively multiplayer online RPG Final Fantasy XIV expansion Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker from its previously planned November 23rd release date to December 7th. Early access will begin then on December 3rd. Um, You can click on the article for full details and a full breakdown of Naoki Yoshida's statement regarding this delay. Um... You know, Godspeed to the team. They're just doing their best, and they just need a bit more time to to polish this up. And I have all the faith in them. They have done a stellar job so far. I have no reason to doubt they can pull this off. So yeah. So I was. This is why I wasn't playing. I haven't been playing Final Fantasy fourteen for a little bit. I mean, don't you still have patch quests left? I have post Shadowbringers. Yeah. But I'm like just not too worried about it. Okay. I'm like I'm like I got I got enough time. Mm, you said it um, now. <laughs> I said that now, right? Like uh, no, and when I, since I have friends I play with who are willing to do dungeons with me, yeah. it's it's a lot easier. Yeah, you'll be fine. I, I mean, I and I'm not like su- I'm not super invested in the story. Mm. <laughs> And I know blasphemy for some people. Like, I still listen to what happens, but sometimes I don't even retain it. <laughs> oh dear, lord. Um, I, when I heard the news, I thought to myself, you know what? I will catch up to Endwalker. But then I quickly realized, you know, with, with Shin Megami coming out and, uh, how long that takes and Pokemon coming out and well, Pokemon's not going to be a huge, sure, but I still want to get into it. And then you have Forza, right. you have Halo Infinite. I'm like, well, uh, will I we'll even battle. have time? 
for any of this? Well, when we that would be a good uh, video uh, us Pokemon battling. Oh, sure, we could get into that. That, that could be like because none of us are, neither of us are like competitive. <laughs> competitive yeah. yeah so it would be a lot more fun we wouldn't have to worry about having the same exact team you could stream it this could be a thing i mean i i think i preferred um mm -hmm. just because of in case of um, lags and anything connection issues or lag mm -hmm. yeah i prefer more of like a youtube video okay sure it's easier that sure. way but yeah maybe we could do that yeah. <laughs> and we'll see <laughs> only one can stand tall also i don't know how that would would we have it would we have to do it uh, like a, a like two, like a split screen type thing. Hmm, that's interesting because you know I don't have any capture equipment, so right, I'd exactly. To, so I yeah, it might have to be. Yeah. I'd have to figure something <laughs> out. You can record the footage on your Switch. Uh, I could. Uh, well, I don't know. Isn't there like a limit though? Like like ten seconds because it's the Switch. Oh. I I think they I think they upped it to thirty seconds or something. Right. They 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 increased it I think mm. recently, but still it's not it, meant for like. A yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not enough. We'll we'll figure something out, but this this should be fun. Okay, next up we have Jump Force Digital Sales to end February seventh, twenty twenty two. Online service to end August twenty fourth. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Bandai Namco will end all sales for the Jump Force game downloadable content and virtual currency on February 7, 2022 at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time across all available platforms the company announced. Online service will cease to operate beginning August 24, 2022 from anywhere between 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and 10 p.m. Pacific Time slash 1 a.m. Eastern Time. After February 7th, the following content will no longer be available for purchase digitally. Jump Force for PS4, Xbox One, and PC Steam. Jump Force Deluxe Edition for Switch. Jump Force Character Pack 1 to 14. Jump Force Character Pass 1 to 2. JF Metal. Just say all the all the, I, I, all the character passes. I just, just wanted to be specific. And then mm. um, some extra stuff regarding the online stuff, uh, which you can read if you click on the article. Right. Um, so yeah. Um, this is due to like licensing stuff. I'm pretty sure. Probably, but that also gets me to think. You can re-up a license and then put the game back so online. I'm so this is probably a con more of a confluence of things. Like um, maybe the sales aren't as incredible as they'd hoped. Or if the, and they kept making DLC for it. <laughs> well, it, the DLC could have already been green lit, and they already allocated right. resources for it, so it, it wouldn't make much sense to just say, "Oh no, we're just going to scrap it." Um, right. And I think maybe the player base has dwindled significantly. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I uh, I I'm, I made sure to pick up the physical edition of this for PS4 because like at this point there's no there's no. Mm -hmm way like some kind of full edition is coming out so i'm like you know in case the price goes up i'm gonna get the physical edition and then i also got the mm -hmm. the other the ps4 exclusive i got both for ps4 um because the other one that we got jump stars victory versus plus was J -Stars. ps4 exclusive or j stars yeah. Um, um I, and both have not reviewed that well but again i'm not a big fighting game person i just like the crossover aspect and they're the only uh jump like jump crossover fighting games that have been localized so far not not so far but um, the crossover crossover ones in, in recent memory maybe i i think because we never got the ds ones. no we didn't get the ds ones but i, I think there might have been others uh, and we didn't get battle stadium don no um, but I, 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 I'm not, I'm, I'm unsure or unwilling to say I'm checking right that now. this would be the only crossover video games based on weekly Shonen Jump, Famicom Jump, Hero, Retsuden, Famicom Jump 2, Psycho, No, CNT, and Jump Superstars, Battle Stadium, D.O.N., Jump Ultimate Stars, mm -hmm. J-Stars Victory Versus, and Jump Force. Okay. So, so yeah, we only got two okay, of those. Okay. Well, although they don't. 
come out that often. I thought they came out more more often than that. No, they, they, they didn't. They don't come they out that often. They came out regularly yeah. on the DS, but then um, once they migrate... Well, just jump superstars and jump ultimate stars. Yeah, I mean, well, regularly in, in that they came out in short succession of each other. Um, right. Yeah, it's unfortunate because there are probably some people who really like this game and um it's the nature of games these days that they will cease to exist in some form or another which is kind of upsetting but it is what it is um uh we we talked we did talk about this like a few times on the show but uh, you're also not the biggest fan of like arena brawlers um what what makes jump force enough of a sell for you to want to keep it as a, a thing for the future like preservation well, wise one it's like it's like crossover stuff mm-hmm. and um the fact that it's like it's all these manga characters in the real world mm-hmm. and that's pretty cool and also you can create your own character it's a that's part of the story. You create a character. Yeah. And do you have any favorite manga properties that you'd be... Um... One Piece, Yu-Gi-Oh! Hmm. Um, I mean, there, there's stuff I like. Mm-hmm. In, like, I, I like all the stuff. Um, there's also The Adventure well, not, of Die. Yeah, uh, not, not all the stuff, but I like a handful of the stuff mm. in featured in here my hero academia naruto one piece so there's enough for you to Yu-Gi-Oh, sink your teeth Yu-Gi-Oh, in haka show jojo yeah okay okay um I th- yeah plus with all the dlc characters i think i i might be getting like the is it an ultimate edition or like deluxe edition i might get on, that. on like steam I don't know Steam or PS4 just for, you know. Well, Steam is the one that has Oh, I guess it would be digital either way. Yeah. Um, um I'm fine with that because I don't I don't need physical stuff cluttering my my living space. Right. I I just wanted to get a I like planned on getting a physical copy anyway, mm-hmm. and we don't know if we're going to have another jump crossover game. At least we don't know if another jump crossover game is going to be localized. I think um uh, I think it's more likely to happen these days than than not happening, but we have to have another jump game first, which we don't know. Will it happen? I'm unsure because uh, these days, uh, Bandai Namco might look at the only things they have in their stable of IPs, um, and, mm-hmm. and, and then they figure, oh, you know, it's, it's too risky or too pricey to relicense everything else that's uh, gone to other people. Like, Demon Slayer is now... Uh, part of sega's ips uh or mm-hmm. it's been it's being licensed by sega at least so um that already complicates a few of the things they want to do right um but we'll see how did how this goes um yeah they why don't they just uh you know they'll, they'll, they'll <laughs> just make um a manga strategy rpg that takes gameplay from project exa <laughs> mm. there you go I think that's possible, um, but yeah, uh, we'll see how that goes. Next up, we have Steam Deck delayed until February 2022. This is by Matt Oops. Kim for IGN. Valve has announced that the Steam Deck, its portable computer gaming handheld, will be delayed by two months. The first units will now begin shipping in February 2022 instead of its planned December 2021 release date. In the blog post, Valve cited the global supply chain issues and material shortages as reasons for the delay. These issues have affected many consumer devices from other game consoles to cars and more. Um, You can click on article for a tiny uh, tidbit uh, quote from Valve and uh, other details. So is this a, a blessing for you or is it a bummer? Because you you pre-ordered this, right? Or reserved? Oh, it's not. It's it's whatever. It's a. I was probably gonna get mine in in January anyway. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, uh, it's fine. <laughs> it's really not a big deal to me. <laughs> I mean, you also have your Xbox and your PS5, so. Yeah, I have all my other systems to keep me busy. That Steam Deck is more like a thing 
to encourage me to play more of my PC library games that I have on PC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I have more time to save. Give me a little extra time to save the money. So. Yeah. Uh, 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 no. Yeah. It'll be fine. Right. Uh, next up, Sony reportedly lowers PS5 production numbers through March by at least one million. Uh, this is by Wesley LeBlanc, friend of the show, friend on Twitter, cool dude, really cool dude. So uh, give Wesley's uh, work a, a look-see. Uh, he does a good job. He does good things. Um, yeah, he also has. All a right, few we po- get it. <laughs> he also has a few podcasts. So you know, busy guy. Uh, if you're someone looking for a PlayStation 5 in time for the gift-giving season or even before the end of March, it's now going to be even harder. Buying a PS5 already feels like an arduous task. Unfortunately, according to a new Bloomberg report, it's going to be even more challenging as Sony has reportedly cut its PS5 production numbers target by at least 1 million. The company initially aimed to assemble and manufacture more than 60 million PS5s before the end of March 2022, but that number was trimmed to roughly 15 million. Bloomberg's report states that the original 16 million target was named to achieve its school, its sales goal for the period and get a head start on production for the next year. As expected, the reason is logistics issues and part shortages which have grown to be more severe for Sony, according to its chief financial officer, Hiroki Totoki, yeah, in an investor's call in October. So more or less what Valve said about their Steam Deck and what Nintendo said earlier this week regarding the Switch uh, also lowering production units. Gestures widely at the state of the world, so, you know. It happens. It was bound to happen. You'll be fine. Um, Maybe, you know, look for a different holiday gift. Maybe. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Next up in other news. Nintendo Switch. In other news. Or as I like to call the goodish news. uh, Nintendo Switch now has over 6,700 third-party games. This is by Thomas Whitehead for Nintendo Life. The Switch has a lot of games, and we certainly argue that quite a lot of really good games are in the system's vast library, waiting to be discovered. There are plenty of bad games and silly apps, of course, but there is nevertheless plenty of fantastic variety for those that seek out the better options. In addition to decent support in the retail space, a big part of the third-party scene on Switch is the eShop. Nintendo's download store has never been bigger, which is something Nintendo has highlighted in its financial reports. It's given the eye-catching update that there are now over 6,700 third-party games on the system. This includes over 1,100 editions in the last six months alone, and perhaps import- more importantly, for the future of third-party support on Nintendo hardware, these games are delivering a decent percentage over half of overall Switch game sales. That's a very long sentence. This will have a wide range, of course, from multi-million selling major titles like Monster Hunter Rise down to small download-only games. So I'm guessing you put this here as a response to what we spoke about last week? About the Switch not having enough games? Hmm. Am I mistaken? Is, is, Is there a different reason? What? Oh, no, I never said the Switch doesn't have enough no no no. i said in response to what we discussed last week (laughs) yeah (laughs) it has plenty but the other but the problem is switch does have a lot of um i don't want to say i don't want to use the term shovelware but there are a lot of games that um you can just say shovelware very (laughs) Do, of, surprising they got of do very surprising that they've got they're appro- gotten approved given the indie developers i know who have had a hard time getting their games approved by nintendo even though their games are like you're you know actually have some kind of quality to them you're you're allowed to say there are games of dubious quality in the eShop. yeah okay <laughs> so i mean there are games of dubious quality in all all storefronts digital storefronts yeah. but but like switch is like weirdly it's so oh yeah that's the other thing Mm -hmm. 
Nintendo just, I think Nintendo for some things just does not, <laughs> at some point maybe they stop paying attention or they have like just people that don't really mind. To, because the, did you know I wrote a, um, I wrote an article about the last game to release on every Nintendo console? Yeah, I saw it. And so the la- but the la- the last game to release uh, f- exclusively for the new Nintendo 3DS mm-hmm. was released on October 28th. And it's a very it's a simple soccer game called Soccer Shootout. All you do is kick the ball into the goal. Listen. Well, L- trying to get it past the goalie. That's it. Listen. They look like mighty beans. Sometimes a simple concept says it all. I just, I don't know. I did not expect a, a, not not just a 3DS release, but a new Nintendo 3DS exclusive in 2021. Yeah. Okay. I had to update because, like, the one before that was a different game that was a little less. It was a game called. Well, it is the. It was the last release for. No, no, no. I'm thinking of something else. Mm. Uh, it was something called Herald Reborn, which is this weird 3D platformer that I don't know. <laughs> look it up; it's weird. Okay. Uh, moving on, we have Nintendo will open a second store in Osaka, Japan. This is by Kite Stenbock for Silicon Era. Nintendo will open a new official physical store in Osaka, Japan, around the end of 2022. The new shop will appear at Daimaru Umeda, one of the city's most well-known department stores, located nearby the Osaka train station. Nintendo Osaka will be the company's second permanent official store in Japan. Its first store in Tokyo is located at the Shibuya Parko Shopping Mall, which opened in November 2019. The company previously opened pop-up stores in Nagoya, Fukuoka, Sendai, Hiroshima, and Hokkaido. However, these or those stores only opened in temporarily or opened temporarily in summer 2021. Outside of Japan, Nintendo also has an official store in the United States in New York. That's it. That's all. Uh, next up, over 250 million Nintendo accounts registered worldwide. This is also by Kite Stanbuck for Silicon Era. People from 164 countries and regions worldwide registered over 250 million Nintendo accounts on the Switch. Additionally, more than 32 million of them currently subscribe to Nintendo Switch Online. Not a bad number, but probably not an ideal number for Nintendo. Nintendo revealed the numbers on the 36th and 40th page of the financial result presentation for the first half of the fiscal year ending March 2022. It counted the numbers of accounts and subscribers up to September 2021. Hmm. Hmm. While counting the countries and regions for Nintendo accounts, the company also acknowledged that the list also includes areas where it still has yet to establish its game console business. It noted that accounts in those areas will become a foundation for its future business. It's me waving my arm in the small country no one has ever heard of. Next up, uh, Nintendo teased its next game console. Uh, <laughs> also by Kai Stenbock for Silicon Era. Okay, I'll explain why I'm groaning. Nintendo published a presentation material slideshow for its financial report on the first half of the fiscal year ending March 2022. On the 41st page, Nintendo teased its next game console set to succeed the Switch in the future. Sure, 20XX, whatever that means. Like, are we in, in Mega Man Maverick Hunter times? Uh, Nintendo expects its <laughs> new game console to continue its integrated hardware software product concept. The company has been working on the concept since earlier consoles like the Nintendo DS and Wii. However, it saw the Switch as a new starting point to expand the company's IPs and value added services. Um, here's the thing. Nintendo is working on the next iteration of their home console output. As are Sony. As is Microsoft. They all are. As long as the company is not going belly up, they are constantly working on what's next. 
It doesn't mean they have a fully formed ID of what it is, but they are prototyping, they are conceptualizing, they are working on it. It's 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 not news. It's like water is wet. It's yeah. I'm I'm not dissing Kite Sandbox reporting because it's accurate reporting. It's just that Yeah. It's mmm. Mmm. Anyway, moving on, Nintendo's Nintendo isn't ruling out acquiring companies, but will prioritize investing in its existing studios. This is by Jared Moore for IGN. Nintendo has said that it won't rule out acquiring new companies in the future, but has stated that it currently prioritizes or is cur- currently prioritizing investment in its existing studios as part of a recently published company management briefing. Nintendo spoke about its investment strategies going forward and how it will look to spend in the future. The publisher noted that due to the success of Nintendo Switch exceeding its expectations across the last few years, it has been left in a position where it will be able or where it is able to reconsider how the most effective how to most effectively utilize its cash in a variety of strategic and meaningful ways. Okay, uh that doesn't say much. With money to invest, the company says that its mid to long term plan revolves around two broad areas building software assets and devo- developing excuse me, ways to expand its relationships with customers. Where those software assets include games, Nintendo has stated that its first priority is organically, uh, to ag- organically expand its own organization to continue Nintendo's creative culture. Okay. Um, Final quote is they're not dismissing the possibility of man uh not management of merger and acquisition activities. So you know they're not opposed to acquisitions, but they would like to invest in the stable of developers they already have, which is kind of counterintuitive to what we've seen recently. Like was it Brownie Brown and Alpha Dream that sh- that were shuttered? Like the Mario and Luigi devs was one of them. Um, and there was another. Alpha Dream, yes. What was the other one? Brownie Brown. Is that still active? What was that? Brownie Brown. That's a dev. Uh, I think you're making that up. No, I'm not. Uh, Brownie Brown. Uh, games. Oh, it's 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 rebranded. It's now One Up Studios. It's. Mm. They have worked on Mother 3, Super Mario 3D Land, Fantasy Life, Brood, Blue Dragon Plus, Heroes of Mana, Professor Layton's London Life. Uh, they did the Flipnote Studio, Ring Fit Adventure. Did- All right, so they're they're doing well. Yeah, Super Mario <laughs> Odyssey, Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we exist. So Alpha, b- but poor Alpha Dream. Yeah, it's like. W- I, I wonder did did Nintendo fold uh fold in the assets within the larger structure like did they take the developers and allocate them to different teams or was there no saving that company it's, I guess we'll never yeah, know I don't know I guess we'll never know Um next up that's a lot of news uh, the Switch yeah. is here to stay, says Nintendo's boss, Shuntaro Furukawa. This is by Damien McFerrin for Nintendo Life. How long is a console life cycle? It really depends on the system, but conventional wisdom seems to suggest that it's around five years. Although there are exceptions, of course, such as the original Game Boy. Going by that accepted wisdom, the Switch should be entering the twilight years of its lifespan as it will be five years old in February 2022. But Nintendo has repeatedly stated that it sees the machine at the midpoint of its commercial existence. Um, You can click on the article to see a full breakdown and quote by Shuntaro Furukawa. I love how Mike Williams from uh, Fanbyte tweeted out that he's giving Nintendo the side eye because this is exactly what they said last year. So which is it? Was last year the midway point? Is this year the midway point? Is next year the midway point? What does a midway point mean? Uh, But yeah, you know. 
I, I guess we still have like five to six more years of Nintendo Switch. Which is not a bad At thing. At least. Which is not a bad thing, yeah. but you definitely are getting the sense that Nintendo is lagging behind in terms of having capable right. hardware uh, to support the games that are out there. Like, even last-gen games, uh, PS4, Xbox, even before that, have trouble running on uh, the Switch's hardware. So, you know, you do the math. Um, okay, next up we have from our buddy Wesley LeBlanc. From Zoftar Details, official Elden Ring resolution and performance priority modes. This is for Game Informer. After speculation over a quality and performance mode discovered via an Elden Ring purchase listing, From Software has revealed the official specs and compatibility details for the upcoming RPG. The PS5 and Xbox Series X versions will be identical. Both have a resolution mode that prioritizes a 4K resolution with a 30 FPS lock, and a performance mode that will prioritize 60 FPS gameplay with a dynamic resolution that adjusts while playing to ensure the 60 FPS frame rate. Uh, that it remains stable. Both new consoles will support ray tracing via a patch and HDR as well. The Xbox Series S will support resolutions up to 1440p and a 60 FPS frame rate via the performance mode. It also supports HDR, but it won't include ray tracing. On the PS4 Pro, expect a 1800p resolution, a 30 FPS frame rate, and HDR. The standard PS4 doesn't support HDR, so don't. Ex- no, that's not true. The standard PS4 does it does support HDR. Oops. Maybe this game does not support HDR for the PS4 standard. That would make sense. You can expect a resolution up to 1080p with 30 FPS, though. Uh, I keep forgetting Elder Ring is cross gen. Yeah, I think I think everyone exp- is this mm-hmm. the first FromSoft game that's cross gen. Cross gen. Oh. Not counting like remasters, like just to have a cross gen release, or at least the first Souls game. Bu, 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 bu. I, w- hmm. I want to say yes, but I think well, cross gen at launch, yes, is the first cross gen at yes. launch game. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I meant. Because they eventually ported. Dark Souls 1 and 2 to... Yeah, the remasters yeah, and such, so yes. It, it do, well, do, mm, yeah. So, you know. Yeah, so cross gen and launch, yeah. Um, I should also finish this. Uh, Xbox X One X consoles will support up to 4K resolutions, HDR, and 30 FPS. Xbox One consoles will hit resolutions in Elden Ring up to 900p and a frame rate of 30 FPS, but HDR will not be available. Okay, so... Uh, hmm... I'm in a bit of a pickle. Like, do I go for PS5 or do I go for Xbox Series S? I should go for Xbox Series S just to support Xbox, but PS5 has the better performance. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Next up, Elden Ring cross save and frame rate details revealed. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. Bandai Namco released information regarding the cross save feature as well as details about the frame rate and general performance for Elden Ring, what we just mentioned. Additionally, ray tracing will be available for the title, what we also just mentioned. This will be implemented through patches. Okay, I should skip to the part where we didn't mention anything. While Elden Ring will have a cross-save feature, it will be limited when it comes to the PS4 and PS5 version of the game. PS4 users will be able to transfer their save files to their PS5. However, it will not work the other way around. Those playing on the PS5 will not be able to transfer files to the PS4. That said, the Xbox One and Xbox Series X versions of Elden Ring will allow for users to freely transfer their save files between the two consoles. Neither console will have any limitations regarding this feature. Free upgrades will be available to consumers who bought Elden Ring on PS4 and Xbox One. So, you have a bit of freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> next up, this should have been in a bad dish news, but okay. Uh, Konami delays. Oh, whoops. It, it's fine. <laughs> My bad. It's fine, it's fine. Konami delays eFootball's proper launch until spring 2022, cancels controversial 33 pound premium player pack. So that should be. 
probably like 40 US dollars premium pack. Uh, this is by Wesley Yin Pool for your gamer. Um, Konami has delayed foot eFootball's proper launch for. No, I should redo that. Konami has delayed eFootball's proper launch to next year following the game's disastrous release. Version 1.00, which was due out 11th of November, has been postponed to spring 2022, Konami said in a note to press today. Uh, the mobile version of the game has also been postponed to spring 2022. Yeah, so you can click on the article for a full breakdown of that, but it's, this is super disappointing because before launch, I was very excited of the prospect of uh, free-to-play uh, s- soccer slash football game because I think that should be the way to go and because uh, essentially what we're getting every year are glorified expansion packs with some modifications under the hood do they warrant like a yearly $60 purchase or now $70 purchase that's up for debate so uh, this was a very good opportunity to showcase something else but they bungled it and now they have to walk it back hmm disappointing next up shoji meguro announces stealth rpg guns on darkness for pc oh japan richard titles this is by sal romano for gamatsu (laughs) persona series composer shoji meguro under the alias mega rock and Kodansha's Creators Lab have announced Stealth RPG Guns on Darkness for PC and Steam. Or PC via Steam. A release date was not announced. You can click on the article for a full breakdown and a, a smattering of... Um, um, what do you call that? Uh, screenshots for the game. So, uh, yeah. Check it out. Um, yeah, and now on to you, Errol. All right. Kogan. Kogan? 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 Whatever. Sword of whatever. Rewind special mission demo now available for Xbox Series, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Play a special stage, not available in the full game. This is by Sauron Mono for Gamatsu. A special mission demo for Kogan Sword of Rewind is now available for Xbox Series, PS4, Xbox One, and PC via Steam. Developer Gem Drops announced. The Switch demo will arrive at a later date. The demo contains a special stage, not available in the full game. Can you reach the boss and defeat it within the time limit, or will you run out of time and be sent back to the title screen to start over? The clock is ticking and only your skill will see you through. Beating the boss also sends you back to the title screen, but it's so much more satisfying this way. Save data from the demo will not be carried over to the full version of the game. Well, yeah, because the level isn't even in the full game. Hmm. So, what... what Kogan Sword of Rewind is due out for Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC via Steam on January 27th, 2022. So, what about this game made it stand out for you? Because I've never heard of it. Um, it reminded me of Azure Striker Gunvolt. Fair enough. And probably the character Copen, because it's called Kogan. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but but that but that um the uh, the screenshot they use mm-hmm. it reminds me a lot of. And like the images I've seen remind me of. Uh, Azure Striker Gunvolt. Mm, okay. So for you have a sword. Yeah, so uh, very much in keeping with your tastes then. Yeah, looks pretty fun. I never played Azure Striker Gunvolt, but maybe someday. Hmm. Uh, next up, Break Arts 2 for PS4 launches December 2nd. So I think this game is already on PC. This is by Sao Romano for Gamatsu. Priced at $19.99. The PlayStation 4 version of Break Arts 2 will launch via PlayStation Store on December 2 for $19.99. Publisher Playism and developer Mercury Studio announced. First launched for PC on via Steam in February 2018. It's, um... You customize robots for cyber, cyber battle racing. It's like IGPX, if anybody remembers that tsunami show. 
Mm. C- customizable robot racing. That's why I was interested in this one. Mm. And no, there is. I looked up if there was. It doesn't seem like it's a break. There's a Break Arts one. It's just called Break Arts Two. Ah. Oh. That's that's super confusing. Why do that? Let me see. <clears throat> Let me see again, just in case. Mm. But I I looked it up. Break Arts One. No, when I search Break Arts One, it goes to a thing about Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, when I search Break Arts game, it just goes to Break Arts 2. That is that is special. That is very special. <clears throat> Next up, Final Fantasy 7, a uh, numeral that does have meaning. The first soldier launches November 17th. <laughs> this is by Saramano for Gamatsu. Free to play battle royale game Final Fantasy 7, the first soldier, uh, blah, blah, the first soldier will launch for iOS via App Store and Android via Google Play on November 17th, publisher and developer Square Enix announced. Click on the article if you want a full breakdown and uh, if you want to watch any of the trailers. Back to you. All right, Monster Hunter Rise Sonic collaboration out in November 2021. This is by Andrew Kia for Silicon Era. A new Sonic the Hedgehog collaboration is heading to Monster Hunter Rise this month, Capcom announced that it is collaborating Capcom announced that it is collaborating with Sega to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Sonic the Hedgehog series. The collaboration will release sometime in November 2021. Capcom will reveal more information at a later date. While the collaboration was teased back in September alongside the Ghosts and Goblins event, Oh, not Walt. Walt was after that. Well, Capcom mm. didn't offer any specific details. The announcement does mention that the collaboration will be in the form of an event quest. If past collaborations are any indication, the event quest will likely reward players with layered armor for the Hunters, Palico, or Palamute. Or all... I could see it being, like... One of... One of, like... Hunters get an outfit based on one character, Palico is based on another character, and then Palamute is based on another character. Mm. Okay, that could be um, interesting. And, uh... This isn't the first time Monster Hunter and Sonic have collaborated. Capcom released DLC for Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate that allowed players to craft Sonic gear for their Palico. Up until now, all of Monster Hunter Rise's collaborations have centered around Capcom titles. This includes layered armor resembling Akuma from Street Fighter, Amaterasu from Okami, Rush from Mega Man, and more. The Sonic collaboration will be the first non-Capcom collaboration event to arrive in Monster Hunter Rise. All right. Next up, um, Kodansha holding fairy tale vi- um, Wait. Kodansha will hold contest for fairy tale video games developer. Okay, that headline kind of confused me. This is by Stephanie yeah. Liu for Silicon Era. During Indie Live Expo Winter 2021, Kodansha and Hiro Mashima announced that they are holding a contest to look for someone to develop a fairy tale game. Applications will start from December 1st, 2021 and end on January 17th, 2022. The winner can receive a 15 million uh, Japanese yen grant, which is around 132,000 US dollars. Shout out to 4Gamer. 10 million Japanese yen of the grant money comes from Hiromashima's own pocket. Well, dang. With the remaining amount from Kodansha. For those who do not know, Hiromashima is the creator of Fairy Tale. According to Kodansha, the game needs to communicate the charm of the Fairy Tale characters. It can be a Fairy Tale version of an existing game concept, and any genre counts. You do not need to be a Fairy Tale fan to apply. Hmm. You can click on the article for more details. Um, this is interesting. A lot more game companies are seemingly going the fan route. I think Konami and Capcom were doing this as well. Mm, I think so. Yeah. Um, the the only downside is that it can also be abused to, you know, uh, create cheap labor. Like, you know, we have a game we want, but we don't have anyone willing to make the game. Oh, let's outsource it to fans because they're cheap and willing to work for exposure so uh, I I hope none of these companies do that so uh, 
Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Atlas developed project pen rated in Australia. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Australian classification rated Atlas developed title project pen on November 4th. The game, which is listed under the multi-platform media type, which refers to console games and not specifically games from multiple platforms, is published by Sega of America, as all recent Atlas developed titles are. Aside from Shin Megami Tensei 5, which is published by Nintendo in PAL regions. Its country of origin, however, is listed as USA, whereas Atlas games are excuse me, normally listed as from Japan. The rating for Project Pen is Mature 15 Plus for strong violence and sexualized imagery. I think that would be like T here or Mature. I don't know. And in-game purchases. While Atlas titles are known for day one downloadable content, Australian classification has not listed in-game purchases under its consumer uh, advice for previous Atlas games like Persona 5 Royal for or Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster. Okay, I should mm. I should note that Australia is a bit more uh, strict when it comes to ratings in comparison to right, the and a lot of some certain things don't even get approved. Yeah. Uh, so it, it you might read strong violence and sexual content, and it, it might be very mild in the grand scheme of things, but uh, we don't know for sure. <clears throat> Next up, Sega trademarks Sonic Frontiers in Japan. Square Enix trademarks the Diofield Chronicle and the Beasts of Burden. This is by Saramana for Gamatsu. Sega filed trademarks for a Sonic Frontier in Japan in both English and Japanese on October 22nd. The development of an untitled new Sonic the Hedgehog game was announced back in May, so it is possible Sonic Frontiers will be its final name. Other new trademarks from Sega include Shining Force and Hikari Toyami no Eiyu. I think that's uh, Light... No. no, Light and Darkness of the... What does Eiyu mean again? I don't know. Are you... I'm thinking of Yusha. Um... We should probably start learning Japanese. Since oh, no. <laughs> AU, is also an, AU is also another word for hero. Uh, so, uh, light and darkness. Light and darkness hero? Light and darkness. Hero of light and darkness? I think that should be it. Or the dark, the light and darkness of a hero. Uh, oh, Yakuza wait, wait, wait. It, Yakuza 8? Uh, I don't know why I'm breaking my brain because the translation is right in parentheses <laughs> behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, he- heroes of light and darkness. Oh yeah, that makes sense because there's no uh, uh, multiples in Asian languages, so it wouldn't be uh, AUs. It's just AU. Uh, but mm. depending on context, you can derive the the meaning of it. Mm. Uh, but that's all for an upcoming mobile game. Square Enix also filed trademarks for the Diofield Chronicle and the Beasts of Burden on October 21st. The latter has also been trademarked in the United States, Canada, Europe, and Australia. Okay. The main thing here is Sonic. Yes. I'm kind of skeptical of anything Square Enix will put out because the Quiet Man exists and Left Alive <laughs> exists. So I don't try. Hey, trust- don't forget about. Oh, and Balan Wonderworld, and, the oh, game of the year. Oh, dear lord, I forgot that existed. <laughs> I will make it my duty to... I will make sure people do not forget. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, it's great, Enix. I love you. You're weird, but I love you. <laughs> um, But didn't they... So this is Sonic Frontiers. Mm-hmm. What was the other the name of the other thing? Well, then it's Sonic Rangers. Or- yeah, and we don't know if this was just a name change. I think it's a name change, or if it's a separate thing. No, it's a name change. I th- like maybe Sonic Rangers was the was the in development title, and then Sonic Frontiers is the official title yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Because if if this is an open world, like people have been, was it a speculation or a leak or something? Uh, I don't know. I think. Uh, Everything being what it is these days, I think it's going to be an open world. But but Frontiers would be a good, a, a much better yeah, I, way to I mean, I can see show that than Rangers. Mm, that is true. Though Rangers kind of um, 
gives the idea of uh, a group of people going out to right um, do good in the right front and maybe that's a thing maybe that is something in the game we don't know yeah. we won't know for a while we'll see we'll see I'm I'm I don't want to say I'm excited for it because you know I'm not a huge Sonic fan mm-hmm. past like Sonic Adventure 2 and the Sonic Advance games but you know it'll be interesting to see what comes up what what it turns out being yeah I'm I'm interested to see that yeah we'll see um next up Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl trailer details and artwork Romanus Park mythical Pokemon save data bonuses this is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu once again. The Pokemon Company and developers Ilka and Game Freak have released new information, footage, and artwork for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl, introducing Romanus Park and mythical Pokemon bonuses for having saved data from previous Pokemon games on Switch. Romanus Park, new to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, Romanus Park is a facility that players can visit after entering the Hall of Fame. There are caves dotted throughout the park, and the chambers inside them are fi- filled with a mysterious atmosphere. Slates are the key to encountering legendary Pokemon. Inside the rooms of Reminus Parks are pedestals. It is said that if the if players insert a slate into its corresponding pedestal, a legendary Pokemon will appear. It's unclear exactly how these slates can be obtained, so players will have to do some research while exploring the Sinnoh region. I'm guessing underground, maybe? Hmm. Probably. Uh, le- legendary Pokemon players can encounter. Some of these legendary Pokemon can only be encountered in one game version or the other. But the thing about that is <laughs> both versions are on each cart, technically. Hmm. According to leaks. There's a thing, uh, you know you know how fast people work when they get copies of, of games. And, and they, uh, yeah, they figured out that actually both, both, copy, both games are on each cart. Well, you know. Uh... And you could just select which one. Mm. When you well, not not when you get the game, but when you you know you'd have to hack into it and do a oh, certain that, certain that thing. That makes but, sense. That makes sense. But yeah, so I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, they'll probably keep doing the two version thing because of money, and this was bound to happen. I think something like this was bound to happen eventually. Sure, but then again, there's also you know, uh, legend. But at Ar- that point, why didn't they? It's like, why didn't they just remake Platinum at that point? <laughs> well, there's also that, but Legend Arceus um, is also maybe going to be a proof of concept. Like, if they can actually manage to pull off a single entry. Um, but, you know, it, it's also a bit too close to Diamond and Pearl remake to, to be... Right. I think mm-hmm. I think these were delayed. Hmm. I think m- we were supposed to get both of them maybe a little earlier originally, but then, you know, the pandemic and everything probably like, messed like up development times and all that. Closer to the beginning of the year and maybe uh, Legend Arceus at the end of the year? Yeah, something like like Legend Arceus would be the one releasing now. Mm, makes sense. Okay. I could uh, be totally wrong about that. I have no idea. We don't really know. but We're speculating. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but like I, it it kind of feels that way sometimes. No, I get it. I get it. Um, because we've never had like like this is a weird just November and then January. It's just a interesting type of thing. Yep. Um, and then look forward to online communication features for players looking forward to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl. There will be a software update available on November 11th, 2021, ahead of the game's release. With this software update, players will be able to enjoy communication features in the Grand Underground and Super Contest shows, receive special items via Mystery Gift, and visit Romanus Park after entering the Hall of Fame. At launch, a maximum of two players, yourself included, will be able to battle and trade Pokemon in the Union Room. A software update will be released in the future that will allow for additional players to join you. Um, Then you can... Oh, there's more. (laughs) You can befriend mythical Pokemon. Um, you can get Jirachi from Pokemon Sword and Shield save data. Mm. And then you can get Mew from Pokemon Let's Go to save data. Ah. And then they're celebrating with an event in Pokemon Go from Tuesday, November 16th to Sunday, November 21, mm-hmm. 21st. Players will be able to ca- encounter special Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup wearing hats inspired by the protagonist of Di- Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. 
avatar items based on the outfits of the protagonist will be available at no cost in the style shop. And avatar items for Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplum mo- motifs will be available in exchange for Pokecoins. And then there'll be uh, Diamond and Pearl Pokemon will appear in wild, in the wild and in raids. Hmm. So, all right. So, I'm still excited for those. I know people are... You know, it's it's part of the, the Pokemon cycle. People are having a discourse about, oh, these Diamond and Pearl remakes, they're, they're too faithful. I'm like, you just said you wanted faithful remakes. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> I don't think Poke- Pokemon fans don't know what they want. And I'm not saying that, like, oh, Pokemon fans don't have valid criticism, because there are some. There's always some valid criticism, I, you know. I th- but I think the thing that that compounds this is that we have now multiple generations of fans right who, who all have their own distinct idea of what this game should be and then there's mm-hmm. the pokemon company who have their own ideas about making the, these games as accessible right. as possible for the core audience core audience being you know five to Children. ten year olds <laughs> yeah um there was a post on reddit and P- and i saw somebody tweeting about it that like P- there were some people saying like Pokemon X Y Gen Six had so much more personality than these, th- than than these new ones, and I'm like, did were you uh, around when when Gen Six first came out? Because uh, <laughs> there were plenty of people not happy about certain things. Look, it's not everything. It's just the Pokemon cycle. It's just the Pokemon cycle. Not Multiple everyth- generations, just like you said. Not everything's going to be for you. I mean, if you look at the actual animals that exist on planet Earth, not every animal is a looker, so... <laughs> and again, I reiterate what I always say. If you, if you don't like the direction Pokemon is headed in, try other Pokemon-like games. There are other monster-collecting games that are great that stand on their own just fine yeah but then people are like yeah but it's not pokemon i'm like no but i'm giving you an alternative here you, like you can't have come your, on you can't have your cake and eat it too monster hunter stories 2 great game shin megami tensei 5 probably a great game <laughs> i can't mm. clarify that yet um we're on a final fantasy great game uh, I'm trying to think of like other mono. Oh, Digimon Story, Cyber Sleuth, great game. Hacker's Memory, uh, but you can get the complete edition now, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and next up, we have Pokemon Legends Arceus detailed screenshots, in-game save data bonuses. This is once again by Saramano for Gamatsu. Pokemon Company and developer Game Freak have released new info and screenshots for Pokemon Legends Arceus, introducing the in-game bonuses for having save data from previous Pokemon games on Switch. Uh, tra- trainers who have played Pokemon Sword or Pokemon Shield will be able to take on a research request in Pokemon Legends Arceus in which they'll have a chance to add the mythical post- Pokemon Shaman landform to their team. They'll also be able to claim a Shaman kimono set designed after this mythical Pokemon. Um, it'll be the request that allows players to meet Sha- Shaman will be available to accept in Jubilife Village after viewing the game's end credits. All right. Players can claim the sh- Shaman Komodo set by speaking to the Clothier after joining the Galaxy Exp- Expedition team. So you can get the outfit early on, but you can't get the Pokemon itself until later. Okay. Trainers who have played Pokemon Let's Go will be able to claim a Pikachu mask and an Eevee mask in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Players can ca- claim both by speaking to the Clothier after joining the Galaxy Ex- Expedition team. It's just a. Ma- it's not like a. Ma- it's a mask you put on the side of your head. It's not like you you wear it. Unfortunately, yeah. well, you still wear it, but it's not like you wear it's, it over it's the kind face. It's kind of more like a cool fashion accessory. It's like Zora and his pumpkin thing, in Nightmare Before <laughs> Christmas World in Kingdom yeah, Hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we have one more piece of Pokemon news to get through. The Pokemon Company on Increasingly Angry Fans. We've heard a lot. This is by Logan Plant for IGN. The mainline Pokemon franchise is an interesting place as it approaches its 25th anniversary. At its core, Pokemon is designed with children in mind as the target audience. But Pokemon is one of those exceptions that is seemingly immune to the consequences of aging and growing up. Um, I'm skipping some stuff. 
The Pokemon company has faced a great mm-hmm. deal of criticism throughout the last few Pokemon releases, and now the company is responding to the fan outrage. To the fan outrage, speaking to Axios, Pokemon Company Director of Consumer Marketing J.C. Smith says the developers have heard fan complaints and are forced to balance the wants and needs of fans of all ages. We have a group of creators and professionals working at the Pokemon Company that have been through a lot, seen, heard a lot. They have thicker skin than many people do because they've heard it. Much of the criticism levied at the new Pokemon game releases are for not having the content that long time fans have come to expect. If you check out the discourse on Twitter or Reddit, it doesn't take long to see what Smith is referring to. Um, certain segments of the Pokemon fan base are constantly complaining that the games aren't what they used to be, that Game Freak is lazy, and that the games are cash grabs. As the franchise continues to grow, the problem turns into just how many different generations of Pokemon and in turn Pokemon fans there have been, like you said. Smith says the developers of Pokemon work to make sure that all the generations are getting some attention. It does not feel that way sometimes when it comes to picking which Pokemon are represented on modern gaming platforms. This, of course, is a reference to Sword and Shield, which received an unprecedented amount of backlash over the decision not to include some legacy Pokemon from older games. Um, Game Freak believes that it makes logistical sense to trim the roster for future entries as long as every type of Pokemon fan is getting at least some love. Producer Junichi Masuda has said the Sword and Shield developers needed to trim the number for balance reasons and because of the time it takes to create higher fidelity models for Nintendo Switch. Smith echoed these sentiments by saying it all comes down to balance. But there's also a vision of what creators want to provide, and it's a matter of finding the delicate balance throughout. He also said that the Pokemon Company is well aware of fan requests to push Pokemon in a new direction, which we're seeing with next January's Pokemon Legends Arceus, a bold new vision for the series that breaks many of Pokemon's known conventions. We hear it, and I think the creators definitely understand that there's a desire for maybe something, but we try to focus on making the core accessible to everyone. Um, yeah, these. remember, you know, despite your criticisms... There are still people behind these games. Yeah. Like, people actually... And I know it... Uh, it's, it's so frustrating. It's... it's. Uh, I just it's, don't like the whole lazy... The whole lazy game devs rhetoric is so tired. And it's not just like Pokemon that people say it with. It's just... It's the most common one I've yeah. seen. But And, you know, we've mentioned it a lot on this podcast... It, the, the, the Pokemon games have such a short turnaround that they can't do anything else. They they don't have an extension. There are multiple deadlines, multiple products, uh, an anime show, toys, Happy Meals that have to uh, be launched in conjunction with uh, a major game release. It's, it's not something they can just say like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll just uh, skip this year. We'll, we'll, we'll keep polishing it for you, just for you, because you want better graphics. I, mm, they they just don't have the, the time and budget to do that. Um, I wish it wasn't true, but you don't become the, the highest grossing media property in existence without some sacrifice. And them having a short turnaround is that sacrifice. So, you know, there you go. Uh, next up, Koei Tecmo publishing streaming uh, yeah. guidelines for, or publishes streaming guidelines for the 33 games. This is by Stephanie Liu for uh, Silicon Era. Koei Tecmo has published guidelines for uploading videos or screenshots of its games onto social media and streaming services. These rules specify 33 titles, including Samurai Warriors 5, Neo 2, and Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater. Koei Tecmo will... In- We'll continue to update this list as time goes on. Shout out to Gamer. The entire list of guidelines is available on the Koei Tecmo website. Some of the titles that Koei Tecmo specify on the list have more restrictions than others. If the game involves characters from another company, for example Hyrule Warriors, then you will need to check permissions from said com- What kind of dystopia is this? In the case of Hyrule Warriors, you would use Nintendo's guidelines. Or as in- This is ridiculous. If... Mm, Okay, if you're a content creator and you have, like, a sponsored code from the publisher, then I can yeah. see 
why this would be necessary. But right. if you own the game and you want to stream it in your free time, eh? Mm. This this is like Blade Runner, but worse. <laughs> well, it's not actually like Blade Runner, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, next up, the Game Awards 2021 teases biggest lineup yet of world premieres and announcement with 40 to 50 games. Uh, this is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. The Game Awards 2021 will feature between 40 and 50 games, according to organizer Jeff Keighley in a new interview with Epic Games. You know, it's great to have celebrities, it's great to have music, but I think focusing really on games is important, Keighley said. Especially this year. There'll be more uh, there'll be a lot of content for 2022 and 2023 that will be showing us our kind of biggest lineup yet of world premieres and announcements. Quote, unquote. Kylie... Will the sick Hydro Man come back? Mm, don't. That, that, that joke is old. <laughs> Keely continued, It's definitely a very busy year in terms of number of games we're being pitched. We're blessed that... Pretty much every developer and publisher wants to have some degree of content on the show. Okay. If, if you want to read more, click on the article. Um, Dear Jeff Keighley, if there's anybody who can convince the powers that be to re-release Muppet Monster <laughs> Adventure, it's probably you. <laughs> can you please get them to re-release Muppet Monster Adventure? You're alone, Thank you. You're alone in that crusade, buddy. I'm not. I could get the the guy. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I I don't know. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Josh Gillespie, I think, mm-hmm. the guy who runs the Muppet History Twitter account. He he have my back on that. There are <laughs> dozens of us. Yeah, a lot of Muppet fans. Alexa, Alexa's a big Muppet fan. I don't know if she's heard of Muppet Monster she, Adventure, she's, but she's probably just a huge puppet puppet fan so she is a very huge yes very huge puppet fan um uh some other people that i didn't realize when i when i uh had that article about muppet games a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. um but yeah i'm uh i'm interested to see what we see at the game awards uh and also they're not doing anything with nfts <laughs> god bless jeff Keeley. anything you're expecting to see <clears throat> or willing to see or wanting to see it's weird i don't know i didn't think about it but like you know because game awards announcements are usually of a certain i mean sometimes like i because breath of the wild oh do you think Breath of the Wild 2 could actually get a release date there? Mm. I guess it's possible. But usually, I feel like, well, some get release dates at the I, Game I Awards, th- but not always. I don't think they want to hold themselves to a release date because <clears throat> they've done that trick way too many times. Right. Uh, I think something like a Bayonetta 3 or one other title that we're not well currently thinking. Well, we know one thing that's not going to be there. And that would be? A, a new fighter for Super Smash Brothers? No, definitely because not. Maybe it's finished. maybe the Ultimate Edition, but nothing else. Uh, uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate Ultimate Edition. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I, I'm seeing a lot of rumors heating up regarding Metroid Prime One remake. Right, I saw that too. That that they are doing it. Yeah. They're uh, releasing them separately, I guess. Yeah, or maybe the, the what they heard originally only referred to Metroid Prime One. So it mm. it could be that that this is where we get it announced. Because um, people would not be happy about that, depending on what it is pr- or how it looks. Price. Um, I think if you put it like thirty, forty dollars, if it's if if it's an HD upres remaster, it should be fine. Also, these are GameCube and also Wii games. So, and we have Skyward Sword. So I guess it wouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe it might be okay. Yeah, people might be a little annoyed that it's not like a full collection. Uh, listen, Nintendo. I mean, Nintendo's it's, gonna it's Nintendo. It's great that we're getting them at all. 
it, it could be that they want to stretch out the, the public consciousness of Metroid. Right, which is fine. So, like, every year we'll be getting a, a remaster slash remake of a Prime game uh, until they have the next 2D Metroid game, probably. Or the next... Or Prime 4. Or Prime 4, yeah. That makes more sense. So, you know, it, it could be all a strategic rollout of, of content. N- n- right. Not as bad as we think it is. Yeah, so I guess yeah, we'll see about that. Yeah. Those are the Metroid games I'm most interested in playing because I played a bit of Prime Hunters back in the day. Mm. Um next is uh Xbox Design Lab brings back rubberized grips, metallic finishes and more. This is by Mark Ald, the senior hardware engineering program manager for Xbox devices. This is on xbox.com. Um so in addition to the original customization options available in Xbox Design Lab, we've added black rubberized grips available on both the back case and side grips for added comfort and control. 19 new metallic finish colors for D-pads and triggers, including sterling silver, pewter silver, gunmetal silver, abyss black, retro pink, deep pink, oxide red, zest orange, gold, electric volt, velocity green, glacier blue, dragonfly blue, mineral blue, fo- photon blue, midnight blue, regal purple, noc- nocturnal green, and warm gold. Three new color options for controller parts, including introducing dragonfly blue, military green has been updated to nocturnal green, providing a richer earth color. Electric green has been updated to velocity green, bringing this in line with the iconic Xbox color. New, inspired by controller designs for Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Battlefield 2042, Forza Horizon 5, and Riders Republic to get your customization journey started. Controller start at $69.99 USD, and pricing may vary for additional options. Each controller is made to order and will be delivered within three to four weeks of placing your order. In addition to the new features detailed above, you can customize the controller body, back case, D-pad, Bumpers, triggers, thumbsticks, ABXY buttons, and view menu share buttons. You can also add a laser engraving with a custom 16 character me- message. I'm a little disappointed I already got my custom controller because they added a new blue. Mm. And I was doing all the all the different blues that were available. Mm, okay. For different parts of the controller to be a blue dragon controller. Yeah. But now they have a blue dragon color. I mean, Dragonfly, but... <laughs> I mean, you could always get a, get another one. Get another one at some point? Yeah. I mean, I will need a second controller eventually, so... <laughs> or I do have a second controller. No, the launch controller. Yeah. Or the console controller. But, but I mean... I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll mess with it at some point. Yeah. It's too, too bad they couldn't have those options at launch, but at least they have them now. I, I'm, I'm guessing also in, like the product shortages, uh, right, had an effect. Uh, next up, Tencent buys Ninjala and Samurai Jack developer Soleil. This is by Josh Tolentino for Siliconera. Tencent added another studio to its growing stable of game developers, according to a report from Bloomberg. The Shenzhen-based conglomerate purchased a controlling stake in Wake Up Interactive. Wake Up is the parent company of Soleil, a Tokyo-based game developer. Soleil developed Ninjala. It also assisted Grasshopper Manufacture with the development of Travis Strikes Again No More Heroes, the top-down spin-off of the No More Heroes franchise. It also worked on Samurai Jack, Battle Through Time, and Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker. Soleil has two projects in active development at the time of the Tencent acquisition. One is a mech combat game called Vengeance is Mine. The other is Wanted, Wanted, colon, Dead, a high-octane third-person action game. Both have a 2022 release window listed and are due to be published by 110 Industries. All right, then. Wait, also included with the Tencent acquisition of Wake Up is Valhalla Game Studio, another developer. Valhalla, however, appears to be less active its only titles are Devil's Third for the Wii U, oh boy, and its PC-based online spin-off and Momotaro Densetsu 2017 for the 3DS. Yeah. That was Devil's th- Third. Devil's Third. Uh, that's a that's a storied game name. It's quite a game. Yeah. 
Next up, Fortnite latest collaboration brings Naruto to the game. Uh, I should say Naruto, not Naruto. Uh, this is by the end. Yeah, you know how many times I had to listen to people say Naruto today? Uh, I mean, it's... And I, I didn't want to correct them because I didn't want to be rude. I didn't want to be like, oh, it's Naruto, not Naruto. I'm like, how do I write that? Look, <laughs> it, it happens because uh, when you speak English, you carry over the the pronunciation of the syllables with you. So when you see something that's Japanese, that's how you pronounce it. But, you know, with, with practice and with knowledge, you can uh, correct that. This is uh, by D'Angelo Epps for Digital Trends. Content from the popular anime Naruto is officially coming to Fortnite. Confirming leaks that have been teasing players for months. The new content was announced via the Fortnite Twitter page and will hit the in-game marketplace next week on November 16th. The popular Battle Royale has become known for its out-of-this-world crossover, crossovers and character additions. Just recently, League of Legends Jinx became a playable skin in the game. Now, Naruto is joining the likes of her, Superman, Thanos, LeBron James, <laughs> what the hell, and many more. Aside from the release date, the actual details of what's included in the Naruto collaboration are scarce. Many leaks have shown that cosmetics such as uh, kunai and ninja scrolls will appear in... Oh, the ninja scrolls are going to be backpack bling and the, de- the devil shuriken will be backpack bling. There are lots. Uh, there are also official Japanese advertisements showcasing a few pieces of the content pack, including Kakashi's dog Pakun and back bling. Pakun. Like I'm happy for people. This is specifically Naruto Shippuden. Naruto, what we're talking about. Uh, I'm happy for people, but I just don't see Naruto fitting in the Fortnite universe with guns. But you see, you have all the other. All the other things in the Fortnite universe fitting. No, I don't. Um, Superman specifically and Batman specifically, I do not see fitting. Everything else, fair game. Uh, I can't believe Naruto is going to go fight the Mandalorian and Superman and Batman and Xenomorph and the, the, Predator? Predator is in it too? Yeah. The fir- and Predator and the, the f- Ariana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> the first true metaverse. Uh, and... Uh, I'm sure there are some... Oh, and, and Rick and Morty. Yeah. Well, no, that seems like that might have... <laughs> I could have expected Rick and Morty to have like a random Naruto reference at some point. Yeah. L- listen, Rick and Morty are willing to shoot up everything and anything within sight I- if it crosses them wrong. So um, This is going to be weird seeing Naruto with a gun. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well. Oh, well. Um... But again, it's 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 interesting. This is probably the first like. Is this the first Japanese character to make it into Fortnite? Uh, like like I mean like no like uh, Japanese media. No, you had the Street Fighter Ryu and Chun Li. In- right, Ryu and Chun Li. There are bound to be others. Uh, but this is definitely the first anime character. Uh yeah. If I'm not, I'm I'm looking it up. Crossovers. I don't. Yeah. Uh. Okay, collaborations up till now. Uh, okay. <laughs> you had the NFL for some reason. Um, the NBA, I think, too. Marshmallow, um, Endgame, Star-Lord and Black Widow. Yeah, it's a Marvel Charlie. DC, but I don't think... Chief Hopper, was it? Yeah, there was a Stranger Things, I guess. Okay. Go, go off, I guess. Uh, well, you you've had Ninja, but I I don't think you. Yeah, you they've guessed. they've had no, they've had Ninja the streamer, and they've had like Ninja outfits. Yeah, but uh, not like. Yeah, I think this is the first one. This is like the actual the first, first anime, character, anime yeah. character. So I wonder if the deal is just Naruto, or if they have like a bigger deal with like. Shonen Jump or Shuisha and Shonen Jump and Toei and all that, yeah. Like, who would be a good fit? Nobody. Well, the character. I can't think of a. I mean, I guess it would have to be an anime character that uses gun. (laughs) Launch from Dragon Ball. No. 
maybe <laughs> that would work like I'm, but that I, wouldn't be likely i'm thinking of anime and, and and stuff like high school of the dead golgo 13 that's not uh, high school of the dead isn't shown a jump no though. i know it's not shown in jump but wider anime uh black lagoon helsing uh yeah if you if you're doing wide, wider anime then yeah but specifically shown and jump no maybe dr stone because that would be fun i that actually could make sense yeah building stuff i could see that making a lot of sense yeah actually that's the only one though that i can really think of yeah that's it that's that, that would it. be a better fit than naruto to be honest yeah <laughs> but i think naruto is uh is probably closest to the thing we have that has the widest audience i feel like naruto is like um has become a meme itself at this point uh, probably i mean um i don't th- i don't think dragon ball would fit as well as naruto i could be mm. wrong but eh, who knows who really knows um no. But yeah, it's but yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's bound to be fun. I'm I'm wondering if that they, was the, uh, that this story is our main topic. By the way, I'm, we're going a little over time, but just so I'm, you know, I'm also audience at home knows. I'm also <laughs> wondering if if they'll have limited time modes that that kind of um um uh, call back to Naruto or any part of of its media. Like, will where will will there be like rooftop races? Will there be uh, shadow pickaxe only like shadow clone jitsu uh, uh it's probably like an emote or something something like that I, I, mm. rasengan emote there will probably be a rasengan emote probably but yeah it's 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 looking cool oh resident evil was also part of it right uh, but again still first anime character yes yes first anime. if you're not counting yeah uh if you're not counting the cg resident evil and oh that doesn't really that mm, (laughs) those are different designs well mm, (laughs) still counts but okay uh i mean with street fighter the only manga and anime first mm -hmm. character yeah in fortnite yeah Are, are you looking forward to any other character i'm not looking forward to any characters i just think this is funny Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, this is really interesting to see how like anime and manga has become like more mainstream but like at the same time it's not i want to say anime has like the same level of popularity as like the mcu but it it, it it's a lot closer to to that than it was years ago mm, mcu levels no um but it, it well it's still clo- it's closer closer in terms of it it's it's a more it's a bit more better defined and and wider uh it's widely available so um, yeah i think it's easier to get get into the hands of people especially when we have like the you know these these series that that people who don't like anime kind of get into like uh my hero academia Cow- and cowboy bebop yeah, and yeah. stuff like that um but yeah i'm it's just interesting i'm i'm interested to see what what comes of it yeah. even though it's quite strange i wonder how long they they can keep this up because you think at a certain point people would be like oh yeah, we're not having any fun anymore. We're fine with this, but it's still one of the most popular games in the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm guess so, I'm guessing. I don't know. You know, as long as as you have new generations and new media catering to those new generations, this will probably continue. So, unless something is popular enough to take its place, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. No, it won't, because in the grand scheme of violence being the verb that. <laughs> is easy, easily digestible shooting stuff is the is probably the other oldest thing we have in terms of <laughs> violence so it will forever remain popular unfortunately 
or fortunately, if you're a big fan of it, I don't know. Um, who 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 are we to say we're not your parents? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so that's that's it for this week. We went a little over because we had a lot of news and stuff. Yeah. Um, um, thank you for listening. Um, uh, apologies for your ears <laughs> if they're bleeding at this point. Um, send us the medical bill. Uh. I don't, Please don't. I, I can't promise. You can send Jason the Mexican medical bill. Don't send me anything. I can't promise we'll be able to pay it, but you can send it. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. Please be kind to one another. Be kind to yourself. Get vaccinated if you can. Continue to wear a mask. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your butt. Uh, wash your legs. Take a shower. <laughs> Please take a shower. Go outside, touch some grass, unless you're allergic unless you're allergic yes go outside take a walk yeah and avoid grass yes <laughs> uh video games anime for life video games forever um uh good. read some books read some books um stretch exercise uh and <laughs> we're out i need to do that we'll see <laughs> we'll see you next week goodbye matinee